back to the AA. Uh, I was just saying to Willem that the last time he was uh, here, one of the things that stuck in my mind is how he was describing the fact that in his office they only work for four days a week and they always shut the shop on Fridays and uh, that seemed to me such a kind of admirable thing to uh, to be able to do in this day and age when architects are working longer and longer hours and later and later nights to have that kind of discipline and I think something of that uh, of that discipline and probably the, the the kind of enjoyment of the weekend or leisure or the idea of kind of pleasure is, is something that I'm I'm sure those of you who are familiar with their work feel that it's, it's present in, uh, in uh, what Neutling Redike architects uh, do. Uh, what is really, um, uh, really significant is how working with uh, a number of very ordinary projects, post offices, housing, buildings of kind of everyday life, they have managed to be extremely innovative in terms of their design in terms of their material, often working with, uh, with uh, relatively uh, modest uh, budget. And, and uh, for me personally, uh, of all the people who um, were part of OMA at some point, they're, they're, they're the office that in terms of, uh, in terms of practice have, have probably made uh, the, greatest, uh, um, the greatest contribution at, uh, in a sense, the kind of the call face of, uh, of architecture. Recently, um, Neutling Redeik have also published a, uh, a wonderful book, which uh, I thought I was going to, uh, to uh, publicize, but I think Willem will do his own publicity of the book, which is called At Work, Neutling Redeik Architects. And uh, I would like to read a, a brief um, statement uh, from, uh, from their writing, and in fact, I really enjoy also Willem's um, um, pieces, text that uh, he used to have in, in Arcus and in other places. But he, he's written a piece on use. Um, and he says, a building is an instrument for people. It has to be functional in different situations, also in situations that were unforeseen by its designer. Its design must therefore be the most natural affair, a dependable backdrop for everyday life, as natural as the cool tiles in the passage in your grandmother's house during a hot summer holiday, it should not be just a functional translation of user needs. A building's character must side with its users, must sidestep the obligatory platitudes of today's spatial condition. It can be as sturdy as a firefighter instead of glitzy and transparent, as chaotic as an actor instead of clearly organized, as introverted as an academic instead of hospitable, we don't embrace the 20th century pretense that architecture can change people, but we do hope that architecture is able to make day-to-day -day life more pleasant. Would you please welcome uh, Jan Neutlings. Uh, thank you very much for your nice welcoming words. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as your uh, chairman already told you, this is a, a book tour. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to promote the book, but it's, I'm just kidding. Uh, we had this book out uh, since uh, Christmas. And um, we're very proud of our book. Um, so we'd like to share some of the thoughts which uh, are in the, in the book. Um, it, and by doing this, I will take you through some recent works, uh, but more important through, um, I will take you through some of the thinking and the way of the way we work in our office. Um, the, the title of the book is at work because we, for a long time, we have been thinking about uh, what kind of book we, should, we wanted to make. Because um, usually there are two types of architecture books. One is that kind of coffee table book with these beautiful pictures and you get project number one, project number two, project number three uh, in a chronological order. And we didn't really want to do, to do that uh, because it's, it seemed a bit boring. Um, the other type of architectural book is a book, sort of heavily, uh, a heavy theory book in which you quote a lot of French, arch French philosophers and 
other kind of uh, people and then sort of try to to make a story around your work uh, by using uh, um, fuzzy uh, theories. Uh, usually that also gives little possibility for pictures, so we also didn't want to do that. So we thought that it would be very interesting to make a book which is talking about the profession of the architect. Uh, we had the feeling that very little architects at the moment are really talking about what they're doing and how they do it and about the secrets of their cooking and you know the way they put their stuff together and the way they mix it and so in, in some way we al almost wanted to make a sort of cook cooking book with our some of our recipes uh, mixed with if you have a cookbook you also you always get the recipes but you also get the in the end you get a beautiful picture of the of the dish um, and you really get an appetite uh, for, for the dish but you can also try it yourself so in that, in that sense we wanted to do something like that also because we wanted to understand what we have been doing over the past 10 years. Uh, in our office we don't really have a very clear clue about the way we are operating and in a way this was a sort of also sort of self um, uh, let's say lying on the couch of the psychiatry and doing some self analysis of what we were doing. That's why in the book we have been uh, using not a chronological order but we have been using a, a thematical order. order. We sort of di we sort of fragmented the the projects and we, we looked at them and tried to put them in a different order in which we could um, recognize certain themes in our work. Um, finally, we found 16 themes and we ordered the, the projects along these themes. Um, a lot of these, I'll say, basically we, we also see the see our. Um, say the task of an architect or a designer, we sort of compare it to doing a quest, having a sort of journey for a discovery like uh, you know, Christopher Columbus um, say leaving, um, leaving Europe to trying to find uh, India and in, I think there's a lot of relation between, between the designing process and this kind of uh, quest in which you need three main uh, uh, main tools. Let's say one is the evocation, which we think is very important. So like in a way that the whole concept of Columbus is that you have to imagine that if you go west you don't follow the earth. But you might find India. Well, that is also sort of I think mind frame of the of the architect, of the designer. But so you, you need this kind of you need this evocation. Secondly I think you need knowledge. Uh, uh, you need to know about the stars, about the winds on your journey and how, how, it, how you can navigate. And thirdly, you need skill. And the skills is, you know, you have, you have to know how to pull the ropes and how to steer your vessel uh, through the oceans. Uh, in a way, the, the, our, our, our uh, work is also such a journey through architecture and a journey through, um, let's say, unknown fields by which we try by using our if by using the ev evocation, by using the using um, skill and knowledge to uh, to get there, I will show you a few only a few themes and a few projects, build projects and projects which are on the way. Um, because of obviously it's in impossible to go through the whole book. Just to give you uh, some overview of what we have been. Uh, doing lately. The first theme, which is an uh, extremely important theme in our work, is uh, sculpture. And um, let's say we think that uh, buildings um, should be objects uh, in the city, and that you could, you should be able to understand the buildings as objects, as strong sculptural objects. We also think that buildings should have a character of its own. They should should look uh, unpleasant, or they should look uh, grim, or they should be they should have nasty characters, uh, like like um, I mean sturdy and and, and rough. And uh, making sculptures is one of the one of the ways that we deal with our um, uh, uh, project. So so we make a huge amount of uh, uh, smaller models uh, in our model shop 
trying to find uh, the, the shape, trying to find the, let's say the form which we think that these buildings, these objects uh, should have in relation of course to the, um, to the setting, to the, the site and the program, uh, but also in relation to I think the object itself. This is a building which is under construction, it will be finished by the, end, by the beginning of next year. It's a tower for the school of uh, shipping in uh, Rotterdam. And uh, it sits on a, on a river location, uh, a very nice location in Rotterdam, where it uh, overlooks um, the river. And it's a sort of snake kind of uh, a sculpture. A bit of, we, we try to make it as a sort of harbor, uh, giving it this harbor character of, um, of these kind of harbor buildings and cranes. and. Um, those kind of, of buildings, um, where let's say the feet of the building is looking over the river, and the top of the building is looking towards the uh, sea in uh, Rotterdam. On the left, you always see uh, the uh, sort of sort of the research, but you also see the media which you're using. I said the fixing themes in the book also showing fixing different media. I think it, it's also a bit of a critique to this idea of multimedia, the idea of multimedia is also that you always that you use the computer. Uh, but the computer is one medium. So that the, I think our idea of multimedia is to have 16 different kinds of media. In this case, just using uh, wood or foam. In other cases, using felt pens or color pens. In other cases, of course, using computers. So this is all, uh, let's say, handmade uh, stuff. And we try to find, uh, the, let's say, the sculpture within the foam let's say in a sort of Michelangelo kind of way where he said that uh, the sculpture is inside his piece of marble and you just have to try to get it out of the piece. So we, we start with a solid, which I think is very important, which is also different than a lot of architects where who start by stacking paints, planes, like it's a sort of amazing way where you stack walls. We, we start from the solid and then excavate, um, making it smaller and smaller and, and taking out Parts until we try we find uh, the, the the shape the volume we, we want to. This was a competition for uh, Ministry of Justice uh, and the Ministry of Internal Affairs in um, uh, in The Hague, which we unfortunately didn't get. Uh, Hans, we were second. Hans Koloff is uh, building at the moment this uh, this building, a huge hundred thousand square meter operation, and here we wanted to try to. Um, to show in the, the volume the synthesis between these two ministries, the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Home of the Internal Affairs, is that what you call it? The Home Ministry, no? the Home Office, yeah. Which always have a sort of strange relation because one is leading the police and the other one is leading the, 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 the magistrates, is that the, name? No. the magistrates, yeah. Uh, and they are in a strange uh, quarrel at the same time, but they wanted to be in the same building. So the belly of the building are the, uh, let's say, the, the common facilities, and on top of that there's a sort of tango, and a sort of counterpoint, uh, in a stepped ziggurat way, of two towers, making a, a sort of Dutch skyline in the, in the city of the Uh Another project in which we try to really go further in a sort of iconographical, uh, uh, volume, uh, uh, sculptural way to try to, to find an iconographic vo vo volume was a, a project for the uh, concert hall of uh, Bruges, also a competition which uh, actually we were second and is built by, by Robert van Daan. Uh, it's a building exists now, but not this one, um, in which we um, uh, made a sort of uh, form in which the, the, the main hall uh, and the smaller uh, concert hall uh, can deliver us out of the flight tower uh, uh, in a way that the, the, the road, the main road, uh, can go under it and we could uh, make a sort of um, strong iconographical uh, shape in the city of uh, Bruges, but related of course to, these, to the specificities of the, the shapes of the concert hall. This is our entry for the town hall of Moscow. Um, 
which was a uh, competition uh, last year. I think it, it's unclear whether the, it will be built, uh, the, uh, well, whether the will of winner will be built. And here we also did a lot of shaping until we found this uh, uh, shape, which is a sort of Moscovian shape, we think, where uh, we try to make a, a reference to the, let's say, to, to make a, a volume that could uh, uh, express the new democracy in the city, in which, in a big sphere, which is in the middle of the building behind the glass, the Duma, so the city parliament would be, um, would be organized, uh, while at an, uh, on top of that, uh, reflecting, I think, the, the political situation. Uh, in a crown, the offices of Luchkov, the mayor of Moscow, would be housed, and at the same time, by uh, having a, a, a thousand diamond, diamonds, diamond-shaped windows uh, on the outside, uh, we would we try to represent the Moscovian, uh, the people from uh, from uh, uh, Moscow. Uh, here you see one building where we, uh, uh, it's an older project, already about 10 years old in Amsterdam, the tower, where also you see how we try to shape the tower in different ways. It was a standing on sort of pivoting uh, position in the islands of uh, Amsterdam North. Uh, so we made a shape that on all sides would be, would have a different uh, cuts uh, in the shape, also making a lot of different uh, apartments within the shape but at the same time giving a very str strong, sorry, give a, giving a very strong um, iconographical uh, volume to the, uh, as a pivoting element of this new uh, part of town. The second uh, theme in our book is, is the theme uh, context. Um, context is, a, um, is obviously very broad uh, um, concept. Uh, there is the physical context, uh, the direct physical context, but obviously more important often is the, uh, let's say the political or the, uh, context or the uh, cultural context uh, or the, the context of the society in which you're, you're working on. Uh, but it does influence a lot our work and we also always try to, to, to see how we can work with it. This is a project for a new uh, museum in uh, Antwerp. Uh, actually, we're in the final design at the moment. We hope to start building um, by the end of the year. It's a 60-meter-high tower, a spiral tower, where you spiral up uh, the museum. And it's placed between two docks, uh, old docks, uh, in the, just north of the city of the old city of Antwerp, which is here. Um, here, I think the, the city of Antwerp is very flat, and there, is, there was no possibility in the city to overlook the city. So we thought that making a museum would be very interesting as a, as a new tower. There are three towers in Antwerp. The Tower of God, which is the cathedral, which is closed by the uh, fire brigade because it's too dangerous. There's the Tower of the Money, which is a big bank tower. You can only get to the top there if you are a millionaire and you're invited to the lunchroom. Uh, and there is the Tower of the Police, which is the third highest tower, which is also impossible to get there unless you were a crook. So we wanted to make a Tower of the People, a Tower of the People of, uh, of uh, uh, Antwerp, which is 24 hours per day open. So the museum actually the, is, a, is a spiral gallery, which is open to the public. You don't have to pay, you can go to the roof. Uh, and there are always parties on the roof. And in that sense, uh, it's a sort of tower for the for the, the people within this uh, dock situation. Sometimes you have to work in completely different situations like these typical, uh, very uninteresting uh, uh, industrial areas. And there also we try to, to use these kind of contexts by uh, let's say, let's say inverting the, the boredom um, and using the, using the skin as a pamphlet um, uh, for the company. I'll come back to that later. Uh, here again, this uh, same concert hall, uh, seen in the context where you see that it, it inscribes itself in a, in a park uh, in the old medieval uh, town. And this, in the first 
for the first time in 500 years in Bruges, which is a sort of medieval Disneyland visited by lots of uh, Japanese uh, people. Uh, we we uh, have inserted, uh, we did insert a, a piece that in our, our uh, thought should be as important as the cathedral and should be communicating with the cathedral. And that's also a reason why we made it uh, pretty high, 50 meters high, in a city where normally you only have three uh, stories high. Uh, another contextual uh, design is that of the the World Trade Center, the Ground Zero uh, competition. Uh, we entered that competition uh, a year ago together with SOM, it's one of the, the last six uh, competitors, uh, and also stepped out of it uh, a week before handing it in because we had a big um, difficulty with understanding the American uh, uh, society at the moment. There was a big break, I think, between the European and the American society in a way of thinking which you really felt uh, at the point and we stepped out of the of the team giving the grounds to the Americans which we thought was uh, more appropriate at the moment our uh, suggestion to make there was uh, was the following we thought that the context in which we were working was um, pretty different I mean the Americans thought that uh, they should um, let's say they should uh, uh, address this uh, issue by making something which was even bigger, and expressing their power and their, let's say, the, the money, by making the biggest office tower uh, of the world. We thought that this was quite a, a stupid uh, reaction towards terrorism, and that a real, a good reaction towards terrorism would be to counter terrorism, or to answer terrorism with culture and uh, civilization, uh, not trying to get the highest uh, the tower, but to, um, to make a, a, what we have been calling the, uh, a world tower of cultures, a sort of um, horizontal piece in the air in which all kinds of international institutions for education, cultural, religion, uh, together with um, exhibition spaces, theaters, and so forth, could be put in place. So um, an idea of hope uh, rather than a sort of cynical um, investment in one million uh, square feet of square of office space. Um, the horizontality also is, is in that sense contextually that, that I think uh, the, uh, let's say by making the horizontal bar um, actually the whole problem of getting making something higher was solved. Uh, something completely different is in uh, an old town uh, in the south of Holland where we I had a situation in which, um, in which uh, the 19th century ring uh, had been destroyed and some of these nice villas that you could uh, uh, see here were being demolished. We um, thought that it would be very interesting by, uh, to combine uh, new architecture with the old one, not to demolish the, the old house, but to keep it as a center of this uh, um, uh, this. Uh, Condominium as a sort of clubhouse, which you can see here. So this this was a project in which the context was quite important, but not in the sense that it um, uh, tried to 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 make sort of camouflage within the context, but rather uh, trying to uh, to use the existing context and to to use it as a leverage uh, and as an extra quality for the for the the third uh, important um, theme is uh, the system. We think that um, so in the way we work in the office, we, I mean, besides looking at the context or, look or making all these uh, models, we try to make a sort of system, sort of algorithm, uh, assign an, a, a, a mathematical uh, structure, which uh, can govern and steer uh, the design process especially because we think that design processes should be simple um, and we should not be even being bothered with making uh, shapes and floor plans, but you should try to, or at least we want to try to make uh, a simple machine that can allow uh, all kinds of flexibilities with all kinds of changes which occur, occur uh, more quickly at the moment within uh, society, but within companies, within functions. Uh, 
to have these changes uh, absorbed. So, um, for instance, here, this was a, a competition from the Big Bank uh, headquarter. We made a, a 7.2 meter grid, and we could, within this grid, which was a sort of three-dimensional network, we could uh, make our sculpture, but at the same time, make all kinds of different floor plans within one very simple uh, solution. The same goes for this building. This is the building which is under construction at the moment. It's the, the new uh, Dutch uh, Institute for Sound and Image. Uh, it's the archives of all Dutch uh, television and film um, um, together with a big museum um, uh, for uh, television. Also here we had, um, actually we have, we have um, a 12 story building of which six stories are underground, which are the archives. Uh, and by making a sort of Chinese puzzle with a very simple system, uh, but turning it uh, halfway uh, underground, uh, we were able to, to, make, um, to make a system that generated uh, uh, its own spatial qualities, but also could very easily adapt to uh, the functional requirements and changes over, over time. Uh, here you see the same for the museum in Antwerp, where uh, actually also the system is very simple. It's basically only a, a box of 24 by 36 meters, uh, 10 boxes, and each box is turned 90 degrees so that you get a spiral. Um, one box cantilevering over the other box. And the spiral makes, with escalators, makes this huge uh, gallery of the city um, spiraling up. So again, uh, let's say a very systematic approach that matches with uh, the sculptural approach, uh, but allows us not to be bothered anymore with uh, the plans. The same goes for this ministry. You see another uh, picture of that. And also here you see how the, the system sort of, uh, uh, steers uh, the design. Uh, this is an example of a built uh, system. Um, it's just a building we just finished in Holland and Rotterdam uh, this year. Uh, based on the Dutch uh, tunnel system for cast concrete uh, tunnels. Um, where we were using this in the, uh, by turning the, the tunnel system, we could make a, a, a sort of ziggurat uh, terrace a housing with a big uh, a big opening in the middle in which we could put a swimming pool, a pool that sticks out of the building. And at the same time, we could make a big, fat building that uh, allowed us within this uh, tunnel system uh, to, in a very cheap way, because it's social housing actually, to make this uh, uh, project and also incorporate um, uh, central functions within it. Just by using the Another theme which we are very interested in is pattern. Um, we think that um, buildings are born uh, naked. I mean, at least our buildings are um, coming from these foam ch chunks. And then uh, we, want to, we want to clad them, we want to dress them. Uh, so we work as sort of uh, uh, fashion designers in our office, trying to dress uh, our, our buildings. And as you know, um, I mean, dress is very specific. Um, uh, there's a very specific knowledge to it in the way that, uh, let's, say, let's say, you have to organize seams, you have to organize joints, you have to organize uh, patterns that go around the corner. Maybe if you studied uh, men's shirts, for instance, the striping on the shirt, you can see if it's a good quality shirt, the way that the striping is organized on your uh, sleeve or on your um, uh, collar. Um, uh, but also, let's say, besides of the, of, besides being it a way to organize material and to organize building processes, uh, it's also of obviously a way to give buildings a certain uh, expression uh, by using this cladding. So we do a lot of, lot of research in different kinds of, as you can see here, different kind of patterns. And we try to fit these patterns uh, as if our uh, uh, buildings are sort of fashion models. We try to fit to see what pattern fits best in relation to this expression you want to give the building, but also in relation to the, the material. 
uh, properties. For instance, in this case, it was a fire station where, uh, for all kinds of reasons, they wanted to have a concrete uh, sandwich panel uh, building for, uh, for, for budget reasons. And the problem with these, uh, with these concrete panel buildings is that they have these joints, which are usually very unpleasant. We know these kind of Eastern European uh, architecture from the, from the communist time with these, these sort of Plattenbau. And the only way we thought to, uh, let's say, if you can't beat them, join them. So we made much more joints. Uh, so, so we made a, lo a lot of jo joints, sort of, uh, and by doing that, we could disguise uh, the real joints. And uh, actually, we used, uh, uh, we finally found out that the uh, uh, car tire pattern of a fire station, a fire um, car, would be very appropriate. Uh, to give this sort of rough, uh, uh, sort of macho image to this uh, fire station. Uh, a completely different pattern is uh, wrapping we did around this uh, concert hall where we um, had the idea that it should be, should, have, should, should be evoking uh, flowers. Because as you know, um, in, the, in the Greek styles you had the, the, the Ionic, the Doric, and the the Corinthian. The Corinthian was always used for uh, theaters, uh, so we thought that using uh, uh, Corinthian uh, uh, abacus, abacus flowers would be very uh, uh, appropriate, but not only because of that link to the theater, but also because this volume, which wouldn't have any windows, it would be a windowless volume, um, would have this sort of stocking of flowers, and in that way would be softened um, in a very uh, nice way. Besides being, a, being a, as in the local press, uh, um, being a reference to the lace, which is the main touristic feature of Bruges, but with, which was actually not our first uh, image. The, the, the tower for the shipping uh, school actually evokes a, um, a kind of uh, um, stacking of uh, uh, of containers in the harbor, uh, maybe not so literally, but in a, in a longer, so in a more refined way. And in the building for, sorry, in the building for the Television Institute, actually we're working, and we're doing that very often for these claddings. We work together with, uh, with artists, and, uh, photographers, and graphic designers. In this case, it's a video artist, a famous Dutch video artist who is making a glass facade with colored uh, glass and textured glass, with molded glass. He uses uh, old images of uh, the Dutch queen on the bicycle and Johan Cruyff making his uh, famous uh, dolls in the European Cup. So all the images that are in the basement of this um, and are part of the, let's say, the Dutch uh, collective uh, uh, conscience. He uses that and sort of by uh, computer transforming uh, he's, uh, we are pouring that in glass. It's thick glass, heavy glass, which uh, makes, so it's, it's not flat, but it is a, it's on a silk screen, it is a, a real uh, relief uh, uh, glass in, in color. We're testing that now uh, heavily, so it probably will be there uh, next year. Uh, one uh, example of a build building where we did this is where we, together with a Dutch poem, poet and a Dutch uh, graphic designer, <coughs> We made this uh, building for a uh, um, print shop. Uh, there was a poem specially written for the print shop. Um, actually, the idea of the building was to, to make the facade out of paper uh, so that every two months another graphic designer could uh, do it uh, and the printer could show his, uh, his skills. But then, so we, we said that to the client, but then after a week, he said, Yeah, I think it's a bit difficult because then our whole production is. Uh, uh, absorbed by making our facade every month. Uh, we rather just do it once in glass. And so we had this poet and this uh, graphic designer we liked and they made this poem. It's in Dutch, so it's difficult to read. Uh, but if you walk seven times around the building, uh, it's extremely poetic and it, got, it's, it talks about, uh, let's say, clouds that, uh, and the weather that is reflected in the facade and so forth. Um, 
a lot of theme we discovered that we were doing, and we didn't really know that, was we were talking about cavities. A lot of our, our, our uh, uh, projects have holes, or have grottos, or have, let's say, uh, empty, emptiness in the middle somewhere. And we found out that it was quite an interesting uh, theme, and that, that actually is a very good way to deal with buildings. Um, in a way, you should always be able to step out of a building, uh, and in that sense, to step out of it and to be able to look back to it, but also to step out in a situation where, where there's no function or where there's no nothing meant. Uh, usually, in architecture, you make all the functions and you allocate the functions in, in certain spaces. But in a way, we always try to make a space which was not uh, put in the brief. And we often find that this space uh, is the most interesting space of the, of the building. It's a space that is the youth most, but also has the most value often. Uh, for instance, here this is, a, this is a theater complex we did in uh, Belgium, in uh, Leuven, uh, which uh, is partly a uh, few old buildings, like this one and that one, and some new parts. Uh, there are about eight different rooms. Uh, there's a theater for dancing, for uh, film, uh, concerts, and so forth. Um, and actually, we made this around the courtyard. We opened up this courtyard. And what is very interesting is that the courtyard now serves as a sort of heart of the building. It's a half public space where you can go through, even in the city, it's part of a city uh, uh, walk. But you can see that in certain instances it's really used uh, as an open-air theater in which the, the window, this window of the theater, the stage opens uh, and the whole thing becomes one big festival hall. Another example is, a, is, a, is a, an office in, uh, in the airport where we made uh, four uh, big holes, big gardens in the, in the office. Uh, actually, it's a sort of meandering uh, plan with a, uh, a glass box on top of it, by which uh, s uh, we made 30% more space than the, the client required. But instead of being um, in the airport, looking at the airport, you suddenly can work overlooking the gardens, and the gardens have a Mediterranean climate in which you find uh, the odors of uh, eucalypts, uh, olives, uh, and so forth. This is a big uh, office building we're building at the moment, I won't talk about that. Uh, the same is in the, also in the print shop, there's also an inter interior garden. Uh, but because we thought that having a, an empty space in the middle would be important um, because this industrial area was so grim that we thought that looking inward would be more interesting than looking outward. But also that all the people from the garden, would, from the, in the premises, the blue color as well, as well as the white color would sort of look into their workspaces. Uh, just the finished building is a, is a building where we did the same uh, operation where an old, uh, very beautiful concrete shed, uh, industrial shed, which used to be a bicycle factory. Uh, we punched holes in it, four big holes. Um, let's say making the building smaller. So by, by making this building smaller, by taking out the holes, the, building, the value of the building tripled. Because suddenly this uh, industrial shed uh, became the most hip um, office loft for uh, Ogilvy, uh, the, the big, uh, publicity company, it's a Dutch uh, headquarters, uh, and the client obviously liked it very much because um, by, by introducing a non-functional, let's say, empty vacant space, suddenly his property became extremely uh, expensive. We added a few uh, other elements to it, but mainly these uh, interior courtyards, actually here before doing the gardens, but that became the focus of the project. Stacking is another theme, which we use a lot. Um, and in stacking, we use the section. I think the section is, is a very important element and a very important tool uh, for an architect. Uh, a bit, bit underestimated because the stacking, because the section actually shows a three-dimensional situation. The plan, in a way, shows always two dimensions. 
Malay section show three. Here you see studies for this museum uh, in which we try to find uh, the, uh, the way we have to stack these museum rooms on top of each other in order to get this uh, spiral uh, gallery. Here a project for the museum uh, in Egypt uh, competition where also the whole thing is based on a stacking of museum rooms leaving a big uh, internal void as a treasure room. Um, a stacking of the, the tower for the shipping uh, um, school where actually the task was to get all these uh, 3,000 pupils in 10 minutes up and down. So the whole tower is based on the, on the escalator system. So there are no lifts, but so within 10 minutes all these 3,000 people can go up and down. So also there, the, let's say the vertical organization was extremely important. Um, also in this one, in the, in the sound and image uh, building where actually the stacking of the museum on top of the um, archives uh, gave us a very interesting uh, sort of uh, Dantanesque uh, space where you would look into a six meter, six story deep pit in which the archives uh, underground are organized. Uh, one example of a building which we did where the stacking was used is this uh, fire station where actually, where usually the fire stations are pretty low. Uh, you have a garage and you have a, let's say, a, a building for the people. Here we put the, the, the people's building on top of the garages, and on top of that we put a, a pool. Um, in a way that, let's say, because of the stacking, the building became much more interesting. So the top, the top of the building is a pool, as you can see here on the uh, right, where all the water from the roofs are uh, uh, collected. The water is used to pump through to the, to the, the pools on top of this, to pump it. Uh, towards the cars, uh, which is then used to fight uh, the fires. But uh, besides of this sort of practicality, it's also what also happens is that, let's say, on top of this grim um, garage and this sort of disaster kind of uh, uh, environment, uh, uh, there is a sort of environment like a little cloister, like a cloister, where these firefighters sit very peacefully around uh, the pond. Actually, at the moment, there are uh, uh, lilies floating and there actually is a whole uh, family of ducks now which came there so there is a sort of very um, um, archaic uh, scene if you come there with four of these firefighters sitting very peacefully as monks uh, on this uh, roof along this roof pond and then suddenly the bell rings they jump down and go uh, to f to f they go into a completely different world so this this the stacking of these two worlds gives a big quality uh, in this building. Scenario is another theme. We often use scenarios to uh, advocate uh, our, our project in a way that uh, we sometimes have, we have really difficulties to imagine what our project could be. And then by using words or using images, uh, we can sort of make an evocation and then we can put it in scenarios, which is a real scenario, sometimes really, sometimes it's a written text uh, in which we before making the building, sort of talk about how people use the building, what people would do, trying to to see how that can be. Sometimes it's it's, it's a sort of imaginary, uh, an image like a sort of um, a board you make for a film, um, um, which which we use. Uh, the media we use usually here are big models. We make uh, one to fifty models, uh, like sort of dolls' houses, in which we can test these evocations. Uh, of um, materials, colors, but also of these different spheres uh, that are put next to each other. So this, this, these are uh, scenes of the shipping project. These are scenes of the museum in Antwerp, uh, of the Institute for Image. And this is a big project which is under, under, under construction at the moment for the Dutch um, uh, the Dutch offices for um, tax, tax, central tax office of Holland. It's a complete underground uh, operation uh, around two pits. It's a big, big uh, water thing uh, where these sort of silver uh, rooms are sticking out. And the whole evocation there is a sort of James Bond, Barbarella kind of operation where 
let's say, through these words, uh, we sort of try to figure out how uh, a, tax, a tax office could, could be. And by using words like that, we sort of um, found finally the, our design. Um, the, the theater complex we built in, in Belgium is also done along this way, which is a sort of um, Alice in Wonderland situation where the seven different rooms have seven completely different uh, characters. Um, uh, also evoking different different qualities, like for instance here, sort of the main hall is a sort of um, um, sort of living room with a uh, paper a paper wall out of concrete. Um, and other rooms are completely uh, different using this scenario, but also using scenarios in, in the way that people move through the building uh, as a design tool. Ensemble is a very interesting theme, but with boring, so I will skip this. Now you have to buy the book, of course, to see everything. <laughs> uh, actually, the idea of the ensemble is that you make a, you make a, a sort of, no, I don't, I want to explain. I know that the lecture is too long, so I have to skip some, some things. Census is, uh, is another thing. We, we, use, we, we think that architecture is not a pure physical, uh, visual uh, sport. And we think that the other four senses, the smell, touch, uh, the taste, um, where do you have the sound, are also uh, very interesting tools for to make architecture. So a lot of the projects we use uh, humidity, we use uh, temperature, we use um, uh, reverberation, echoes, and so forth, uh, in order to create spaces that are not only visually pleasant, but that have a certain quality through these other four senses. We even taste our uh, samples, of materials sometimes, you see. Uh, what the effect would be. So, in a lot of cases, this also means that we uh, use the, the the mechanical services of the building in a complete di different way, in a way that the building itself becomes one big machine that services um, the building. In this case, the Millard building in, in uh, Utrecht, where the, the the water of the of the rain is collected in a big pond on the first floor, on the second floor of the building, 50 by 20 meters, which is then used as a pooling. Uh, device cooling all the computers of the building through this rainwater. But more interesting is that, let's say, if it rains, it's a huge noise. It's a great sound. It's sort of Niagara Falls uh, within this building. But also, you feel the humidity is damp and cold. And you can sit along the pond, or you can sit in these little uh, cabins here where it's warm and so forth. So, we use a lot of these uh, uh, tricks. To do that, uh, we, we made an eco resort in the Antilles, the Dutch, in Curaçao, the Dutch Antilles, in which the whole uh, project is based on uh, senses and based on the things you feel, and the whole shapes of the buildings are are based on getting these tropical experiences. Uh, the same goes for the firefighters, I explained it before, and also for the bank building. Um, this is the building in, uh, in uh, Schiphol, in the airport, where you see that also here the whole building uh, is a sort of machine for the census. So we have the, the, the standard offices, and we have them covered by a big uh, glass pane, like a big uh, greenhouse. And by doing that, the building, which is next to the uh, runway, is protected from the sound. And within the building rains, uh, within the building you have a, a, a very nice um, Mediterranean climate where you can work, as you see in the picture, with uh, your doors opened towards uh, these Oriana trees. And you see the building. You see here these big cavities in which these climbs are open. And using, uh, uh, in a maximal way, uh, all the senses to give a quality to uh, Building. The last uh, um, theme I want to show you is texture. Uh, texture is in our office also uh, something we, we really study a lot. We don't like smooth uh, buildings. We think that um, the, 
quality of the outside of the building is very important. And uh, so together with the pattern, I mean, and together with the sculpture, these three elements, texture, sculpture, and pattern, uh, form the shape of this uh, building. It enhances the shape, but also the texture gives a, um, gives a, um, a scale on a smaller dimension than the pattern and the sculpture itself. But it also can enhance the sculpture in the way that the texture goes over, wraps around the, the sculpture, and it makes it stronger. So we also do an enormous um, amount of research into materials, working with uh, different uh, building uh, firms, uh, trying to get samples in different materials and colors, and trying to, to see how, uh, let's say, the light cast on it in different situations, but also the rain and the dirt can work over time and can uh, change the quality of the, the character of these buildings. The post office building in, uh, in Belgium we did was a building, um, um, actually it's a, it's a pilgrimage uh, um, city where the Holy Mary uh, came in 1548. She was, uh, she had a she was hoovering above the city, and they made a big cathedral, and still people are going on their knees there until this day. There were so many of these pilgrims that they needed a post office because they sent so many cards only there. But actually, the post office, we tried to make it in a sort of hill, uh, because it's in a hilly landscape, but also on top of it, you see these lights. So it's night. They light up like the Holy Mary is sort of hoovering again over the city. And actually, this is made in a, in a sort of uh, sprayed concrete stone thing where you really had a long research into uh, sand and rocks which could form this sort of strange uh, 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 image. Um, in, in the textures also we often use, uh, work to collaborate with, uh, with artists, in this case Rob Beerzer, it's a famous Dutch sculptor who's making the, uh, he's making actually sort of ic iconical patterns on the, of, or images sculptural images uh, which are blasted into uh, uh, metal panels. Um, it's for the text office, so it's like, like the way you make coins, the way coins are uh, pressed. And he's using uh, uh, masks, but also uh, dragons, because he thinks that dragons uh, protect money, and I mean, he has a story about that. Uh, but uh, actually, more important, of course, is that it gives uh, interesting texture. Same, I already explained the texture of the glass, where the glass is not flat, but the glass is a, is a relief glass, uh, which we use for the Santum image uh, building, where images from uh, Dutch uh, collective memory are cast within the glass. And also here you see a lot of researchers where we use double panes of glass, one with <coughs> color and one with uh, a relief, to also to get a sort of moving The building we, which we finished uh, last year is um, our five um, apartment buildings in a lake in Holland, in Huizen, next to Amsterdam. And there we found that these buildings should be like sort of old U-boats, old German U-boats, uh, sort of floating ashore. And we try to, to, to look into all kind of, sorry, all kind of materials in which this sort of bubbly uh, metal skin could give this effect of not being very high-tech, not being very, but being rather low-tech and sort of, uh, un, let's say, uh, hammered or, or boot. Uh, I mean, like a U boot that has gone through the war, uh, not before the war. So these are these uh, buildings. Actually, they're inhabited at the moment. There are 12 apartments in each building. Uh, they have beautiful views of the lake and they have big um, terraces on the back. Actually, these are swimmers. Looking at them, um, it's, um, it's very shallow there. last year. Okay, this, this was the, 
the lecture. And th these were just a few themes I wanted to, uh, to show, trying to show how we, the media we use, trying to show the way we uh, deal with it. But obviously, in, ev in every project, these themes come together, and more themes, which there are about 16 in the book, which uh, then together uh, form the projects and uh, show you a bit uh, the way we, uh, we work. Thank you very much. You have to uh, answer a few questions. Oh, okay. Um, maybe I will just uh, start with uh, with one question about the. You all right? About the um, about the book, because um, you know, it seems most architects are involved with a sort of project of mystification uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the presentation of their work. Um, and when you make a, a book like this, where you try to establish certain categories, um, it becomes like a manual, yes. where you give away in some ways the, uh, the secret. Like with the medieval masons, they had the secret yeah. of the medieval masons, which they didn't want to reveal. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether, um, what your thoughts are about this, this idea of kind of like giving away the, uh, yeah. the secrets yeah. of the practice. What do you think? What kind of effect do you think it has on on, on the way you're thinking, um, on the reception of the work. Well, I know this is one of the centers of mystification in the world, I think. Where is I am it now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, we don't like this mystification at all because we think that our profession is just a profession mm. in which there are skills and knowledges which you can transfer to colleagues but also to, to students and to younger people. Um, it is a profession which is very old, 3,000, 5,000 years old. And actually, the, the book we use the most in office is a, is a book which I got from my grandfather. It's called uh, Architectuur der Welt. Mm -hmm. and it has all the pyramids and all the, the Greek stuff and all the Indian stuff and whatever. And we, on a daily basis, we look into that. And I think there's a lot of knowledge which can be recycled, can be reused. Not in a, in a let's say, just taking it and reproducing it, but let's say transforming it. Mm -hmm. And I think that over the last 10 or 20 years, um, there, there hasn't, let's say, there has been not enough, or I mean, not at all, um, a situation in which architects try to share knowledge and try to explain how they would work so that you would get a, a discussion about the work. Uh, and one of the things we also don't like is that it, it is very difficult to discuss with architects because they, they, you, there's not a level on which you can discuss, mm -hmm. which is a professional level. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that way, we wanted to make a book which uh, reveals the way we work, also because we wanted to know about ourselves. Like, I mean, we wanted to see, I mean, what are we really doing? Uh, what is important? What isn't? And what are the the tricks mm -hmm. of the métier? And but but this is what I'm interested in. That when you you made the book, the book is a kind of reflection on on what you have been doing. Presumably, before you made the book, you didn't have. Did you have all these categories, or no. you make the categories for the making of the book? No, no, it was first very important because we didn't know what we were doing. Right. So first it was a way to also understand what we have been doing over the last 10 years. Right. Then some the of the themes were, like sculpture was very clear. We right. knew we were doing that. But other themes, like cavity, we only found by comparing our own projects. Sure. But um, then the question I have is that once you've made the book, then you have your own manual. So next project that you're making, yeah. What, what is the relationship between the book and the making of a new project? Do you say, well, this is going to be a stacking, this is going to be a stacking project, which is also yes, yes. dealing with the senses? Well, or, we also found it's very, it's very easy now because uh, when we get a new project and people are working on it, and I say to the collaborator, look at chapter 12. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at chapter 14. This is really a cavity thing. Yeah. Uh, so it also is, in that sense, a manual, a handbook. Uh, not in the sense that you, I mean, it's not a cooking book that if you do that, you get a building. But obviously, as you can see, all our buildings are pretty different. I mean, they're not so, sure. so it's not a style, a way to get a style. It's, it's a way to, to have tools, instruments, by which you can react to a certain brief. But obviously, every building will be different, and every attitude will be different. So it's not a pure cooking book. So you it's it's, it's, it's a kit, a kit of yeah. instruments, a kit of tools, let's say. I also wanted to ask you, 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 you refer in the book and also you just mentioned, for example, here with the U-boat, with the idea of a kind of, there is a, there is a certain level of sort of 
I don't know what is macho, but there's there's something you want somehow very um, hard buildings. Yes. You speak about being against transparency and about light against lightness and so on and so forth. What can you explain why you're against yeah. lightness and you're for toughness? Yes, there's no, it's not toughness, but uh, there's one uh, section in the book which is called. Uh, um, what's it called? It's, it's, it's good to know it's that about you can remember the about, um, <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> about weight, yeah, oh, weight. So the theme is called weight. And it's about the fact that we think that buildings should be heavy. Mm -hmm. And that buildings should express load. And not exp I think it's completely crazy that architects for 100 years thought that buildings should float. And Hoover, and I mean, buildings are extremely heavy. They bet a huge amount of kilos, millions of kilos. And you should you should feel that they have these kilos and they should be on the ground and they should not pretend that they are aircraft or pretend that they are rockets. I mean, they're, they're he it's heavy <laughs> stuff. So our, the last 5,000 years, our profession was dealing with mass and weight and we want to express weight. That's also why we never make columns because we think columns are, are pathetic because columns sort of, <laughs> it's like they sort of try, try to push it up. It's like you know, old people having a, you know, old guys with suspenders. Mm -hmm. How do you call it? Suspenders. Suspenders on there. Because they have to put up their uh, sort of, you know. Uh, we think that, let's say, we make a lot of, um, um, uh, um, how do you call it? Um, when it sticks out, how do you call it? Uh, cantilever. Cantilever, yeah. We think a cantilever is much more interesting be because the cantilever is so frightening that it really shows the weight. And if you would put a column under it, it would be nothing. You know, if you, you would imagine having two columns here, it would look stupid, you know? But because there are no columns, you see this heavy weight, and the, the building gets this sort of, I mean, you call it macho, we don't call it macho, we, we call it robust, you know? But, and I was only trying to be. We like, we like <laughs> heavy guys, you know? but not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and we, indeed, we also don't think, I think transparency is nonsense, I mean, I mean, uh, the most stupid thing is to think that the glass is transparent. I mean, most of the glass buildings are not transparent at all. They, they are very untransparent. So we also think that, let's say, it's more interesting to have light. Uh, so we make very dark buildings sometimes, in which light really comes in like in a very extreme way, but very concentrated, I mean, like in an old church. Or in a, and then the contrasts are much stronger, and we think it's much more interesting to work in that way with light than this, to say that everything should but be But sometimes people who talked about, for example, lightness and lightness in relation to buildings, it's, it's also to, uh, to touch on the, the kind of s the, the certain irony of things or the simultaneous presence of weight and lightness. Not necessarily that they thought buildings were transparent, but that they thought that given the possibility they, they, or the inevitability of buildings being heavy, that there is also, for example, the, the potential for dealing with their with their possible lightness in terms of appearance, not because it was no. really that they were. So, I mean, that's but fine, but it yeah, just but seems why, that. Why? why should a building be light and transparent? I don't know. Well, I mean, the, the people who argue that is because they enjoy that 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 balance between between the the, the inevitability of something being heavy and the fact that it might appear to be. It's like uh, the it's wow so factor. It's the same as your. Um, Cantilever. I also like the projection of. Uh, I'm, I'm from Antwerp, so I like Rubens women and not these sort of skinny Kate Moss kind of things. So that's <laughs> like, that should be just, a bit just wanted to baroque and voluptuous. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's also, I mean, it's also the fact that the building should have flesh and bones. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> and, 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 and used, as you said, it should look used like the, the, like the ball. The and also used, yeah. And also used. It should look, but actually it should, it should stay on looking like, like that. I mean, a lot of buildings look different the first year than the rest of the years. We try to make the buildings look like they're already there for 10 years, and then after 10 years, they're still the same. So who's going to, uh, who's going to ask some questions from Nate, Nate, can you wait for a, for a mic? I was curious about um, how you've been so prolific within uh, the Netherlands, but you don't seem to have 
jumped out to, to other countries around the world to, because it, like the, you mentioned in the States, there was this divide between how the Americans were thinking and how Europe was thinking about architecture and what it could do. Um, how do you get into another type of set of work that has to engage with a different culture or, or a, a, another, another atmosphere? You ask why we only do work in, in Holland, is that it? Yeah, effectively, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's very easy. Well, you started the story about uh, the office closing on Friday. And it's, I'm a family man. I mean, I don't like to be in planes. I don't like to be waiting in airports. I like to be at, at home. home. Uh, so do I, so do I. And I don't, see, I don't see any charm in, or sexiness in being a traveling architect. Uh, <laughs> If I can be uh, with my children or uh, you know at the sea or whatever, um, I don't see the fun of being in, in airports all day. So that's one, one reason. Another reason, uh, which is more serious reason, or as serious reason, is that let's say it was a big party in Holland, uh, to a lesser extent Belgium, over the last ten years, in which we could get museums, theaters, I mean any interesting project. And I did never s saw a reason to do a museum in Denver if I could get a museum in Rotterdam on a walking distance from Memphis. So that, that's another reason. But at, at the moment, we, we, have to, we are actually discussing in the office that we should change this attitude. Spend, <laughs> spend, 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 spend more time at airports. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, in the sense that, uh, I mean, the party is a bit over in, in Lowlands. I mean, Belgium is still going, doing well, uh, a lot, a bit less. So the amount of projects, of interesting projects, are getting, are, is, is shrinking. Mm -hmm. So actually, we're now looking to, towards the east. We think that uh, the next 10 years, things will happen in uh, east of Europe. Mm -hmm. In May, you know, the 20 countries or something. Mm -hmm. A lot of countries yeah, joined. Already joined some, yeah. And all the money will go there. So actually, we're looking there now. <laughs> And it's still a re reasonable flight distance of, let's say, one hour, two hours. <laughs> so you can't be home for dinner. <laughs> uh, so, now, I, I, it's not kidding. I think it's, it's really, it's a pragmatic reason. Uh, could I go there to the area in the back? And then, Hi there. Hi. Um, I was wondering that, you know, given the fact that there is now a recession in Holland and your, the work of your office has been very much associated with a particular moment which maybe still continues in um, Dutch architecture and with um, a lightness in going about design and perhaps something associated with some aspect of the neoliberal economy or the privatization in Holland. And I was wondering whether with now the recession uh, being um, settled in the country, whether you or, or um, some other architects in Holland are perhaps revising their view as far as you know, this um, quickness um, in architecture might be concerned. So, so can you repeat the last sentence? Sorry. Um, I didn't understand that. Whether, whether s uh, s uh, you or some architects in Holland are now rethinking the quickness, the fastness, which one has yeah. associated with uh, architecture in Holland over the last few years. Uh, it's true. Let's, uh, it's true indeed. There's a big uh, change in Holland uh, since one or two years. Uh, which was triggered by, maybe you read about this sort of right-wing politician that was shot. Uh, uh, so there was a big, also a big change in society and in, in politics. Actually, we have a right-wing government now. And we had a, a socialist government before. Uh, but it also has to do with the, the general, let's say, crisis after Septem September 11. What you see is that there is a big swing back in Holland at the moment, uh, going to a very conservative uh, state of mind the peoples, but also the politicians. 
but also for instance the developers and the clients. So um, I think it's infeasible to build this anymore at this moment. Uh, all the developers now want uh, Peter-esque uh, pitched roof, 19th century looking houses. Um, and actually it's, at the moment it's much more, it's really very tough for to do experiments in, in architecture, um, especially in the housing. I mean, the housing actually was the breeding ground for much of the Dutch uh, younger architects' offices, also like our office, because there was a huge volume of housing and there was a big housing demand. So anything the, a developer would put on the market would be sold. How peculiar it would look like, you know, because people were lying in front of the house to get it. But now the market changed, the market is more difficult, and uh, also, because of this conserv conservatism, uh, it's, it's, it, let's say the type of architecture is really changing rapidly. Uh, also, making it much, much more difficult um, to do these experiments. So, I think you will see that uh, the output of Dutch architecture over the next five to ten years will be quite different than in the 90s. And uh, in what way are, are you imagining? taking um, your office in this context? Are you thinking that some of the approaches which you have used over the last few years might be changed or? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, let's say, obviously we, we continue uh, with, with our cooking uh, um, in the way we've been doing that. And uh, obviously there are niches, uh, there are lots of niches in which you can work. Um, there's, it's also, let's say, the housing and public building is also different. I mean, public building is not yet, is, is still, I think, a lot of experiment to do. Um, but um, actually, we don't know. Actually, we are ourselves in our office at the moment, debating what direction we should take and what kind of projects we should do and what the next five or ten years we, we should aim at. It's really, a, it's really a pivoting point, I think, uh, at the moment. Uh, not only for us, but for most of the, the offices. Hi. Um, my question is about uh, the design process, particularly since you, have, you set up the lecture in terms of how your office works, and I'm just interested in the design process. Um, when uh, and you also say that the, the, the way that you've thematically organized this is to uh, kind of explain what, uh, how, how your office operates and the kind of maybe the tools that you use to, um, to generate projects. When a project, for instance, the Antwerp Tower, appears under, um, say, the stacking um, and, and the system, and I, th and I think also the, the, the sculpture mm -hmm. aspect or, or carving from a solid, can you... Um, uh, talk uh, more about how maybe these tools interact then, because some of them seem to, on the face of it, conflict. Possibly. Yeah, <clears throat> you have to understand that obviously it's, a, let's say, this, this de, uh, decomposition of the process in different explainable parts is a bit, let's say, a smoke curtain in the sense that obviously it doesn't work like that. Like on Monday we're doing sculpture, on Tuesday we're doing. I think this is an integrated process in which all these th all these themes and even more themes than we can imagine are being done at the same time. So it's let's say um, the process is not so clear in reality as I explain it. The only thing I'm trying to do is to explain certain elements by taking out certain elements uh, instead of explaining a whole project. Uh, so it's it's purely let's say an educational thing. It's not not the way processes work, of course. And it's also, like you said, I mean, the, a new client comes in and says, hey, this is a stacking process, uh, a stacking. It's, 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 it's a completely... Uh, well, it's, I think it's, 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 I mean, I don't know whether this, this is related yeah. to your question, but the last time you gave the talk, I got a very different sense of the work uh, than when you deal with it through the idea of, of systems of classification, because one of, the, one of the problems of systems of classification is that they never really fulfill mm. the actuality of the thing in, its, in itself. So when you're designing a tower, and you just describe the tower as is, but then when it's described purely in terms of the, the, the performance of a, a classificatory system, 
yeah. it always falls short of the actuality of That's the project. True. And so how do you then fulfill this kind of space between yeah. the hidden things, and this is the, the secret of the medieval myth, and really the things that you reveal. When you show the project, uh, because of the nature of the, the comprehension of the plan, its relationship to the section, to the outside, mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. you get a different conception of description than when you when yeah. you reduce it yeah. to this to this class, classificatory system. No, that's right. And, and that's right. I, but I think then then the question is really the relevance of the classificatory systems in terms of, for example, their own organization, their relationship to each other and what then they reveal in terms of future procedures and so on and so forth. And that's, I think, what's interesting about, about the book and what it could potentially open up, which maybe it also relates to Irene's kind of moment of reflection. You know, when architects have time, they also make a, make a book that allows them to kind of yeah. think about yeah. how they're planning. But I think that no, that's, that's, that's interesting that's for me, how the difference between the last time and this time and the, the presentation. Yeah, it's true. Now, obviously, it's also true that, I mean, actually, this is not a lecture, this is a book. So the thing, is, the thing is that, let's say, in a book it works differently than yes. in a lecture. Uh, in a lecture it seems strange because you get bits and pieces of a project. In a book you can sort of go back and forth and yes. understand it better. Yeah. But uh, I think the critic critique is clear that, uh, I mean, it's much more integrated and complex than uh, this chopped up uh, salami. Mm -hmm. Alex, that, that, that question? Not having read the book, it's a problem because I don't know which okay. the other sort of 12 or processes you, you use. But I was um, interested in this sort of, uh, I don't think you mentioned in a way that, uh, apart from the introduction that Moisen read out, the user. No. And I'm therefore curious, this is a banal question, would you say the pictures we're looking at now, this housing, would, would it be different if it were for social housing or middle class housing? Uh, no, we, n we never make a difference. Uh, actually, we, we've done a, a number of projects in which uh, uh, there were mixed projects where social housing and, and middle class housing were mixed within the same buildings, and you wouldn't see the difference. Actually, also in the, in the, in the Dutch <laughs> housing system, sometimes you get more money for the social housing than for the, the middle class housing. What in I'm really budget. provoking you to say, since you didn't mention it, yeah. is at what point in the process of design oh, yeah, okay. do you in okay. actually include the social dimension? Um, in terms of the user? Yeah, it depends, it depends a lot on the, on the project. Um, obviously, if you make a public building, it's a completely different situation uh, than when you make housing. Uh, if you make, uh, ho let's say, housing, uh, commercial housing on the market, you don't even know a client, basically. I mean, you could imagine a client. Uh, the client is the, is the developer, which has an idea of his, his client, but it's, it's often not a good idea. So we actually, we, we, we think that, um, that's one of the other chapters, is that, that I think you should make buildings that are uh, neutral uh, socially, but also in, the, in, in their function, that you should not express uh, a function which is there today but that because, let's say, build, uh, functions change rapidly and very, very rapidly at the moment, while buildings stay for 20, 50, 100 years. So we always try to make buildings that are not related to the function <coughs> so much, that can be easily converted into to other things. Uh, because we think that, um, let's say, a de determination, determination in which social housing is made as social housing or for certain people uh, uh, is, is a wrong way, because I think the the time, I think, is a very important also tool in, in design. Uh, I think you should never design for the present. You should design for, for a longer time. Uh, and then I think a lot of buildings uh, are torn down because they're too determinated, uh, focused at a certain program at a certain time. But uh, at the same time, obviously, there is a social aspect. Uh, I mean. We, we have a certain attitude towards 
let's say, our political or, or, or environment or the social environment, of course, uh, which is, mm, uh, let's say, a bit low profile in a sense. I mean, uh, you read this text about users in the sense that we think that, I mean, we don't have a high thought that our, our architecture can really change things, but we do think that it can, let's say, give a certain quality of life and accommodate things on our level. So the, the main aim we have in our project is that we try to transform the brief and the program in a way that, that, that you get a higher quality in terms of working condition, of living condition, maybe even others very basic things like the way sun is getting into your garden or, or you can park your car. Uh, but in a way that it is, um, yeah, that, that it gives a sort of extra extra quality within the same. Yeah, we, we, we usually use the, the, the image of the of a judo, is that English judo? The sports, the martial sport where you shake your judo. Japanese judo. judo, yeah. So the essence of judo is that you take the that you take the, the action of your uh, aggressor and you use this action to, uh, throw to throw him over. And that's, that's usually the way we work. We take the action of the, you know, of the, of the brief, of the client, and we use it in a way that he uh, makes a completely different jump than he thought to, and that in the end, uh, this is a, it, it's a higher quality. But it's, it's, a, it's a relatively low ambition in that sense. But but still, I think a rewarding one because you can you can really do it. Well, it's been uh, really wonderful to uh, to see you in a sense go on since the last time with uh, with all these projects. And as I said, I think it's because you're dealing with so many of of, of these projects which are addressing everyday situations, and and you're dealing with them through materials and textures and, and really being innovative, which, uh, which mm -hmm. is really fantastic. And uh, congratulations on the book. Thank you I'm very sure much. everybody is now going to rush downstairs and buy it. And thanks for coming. Thank